Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to take a look back at this past weekend of the Overwatch League. Week 11. Lots of, um, lots of interesting matches that went down this weekend. So let's real quickly throw up my picks from this past week and take a look. 10 and 4 on the week, so not too bad overall, but there were some pretty big surprising uh, results that we're going to talk about here. As you can see, though, 2 and 0 on the big picks, so that is a really nice, 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 nice thing for me. I'm going to reload with the big picks even when I'm not doing as well with the regular picks, so it is what it is. But let's jump into it and let's start with the two NA matches we had on Friday. First, the Paris Eternal taking a win over the London Spitfire. It was a 3-1, if I recall correctly. Spitfire looking like a pretty improved team, I will admit, and we'll talk more about them a little bit later with their game against the Shock. Um, but Sparker definitely brought a lot to this team, a lot to this game. There were times when I... I mean, Hollywood was a, a map that the Spitfire lost, and, and Shax and Sparker did so much work to try to turn it. Um, and they, they came up just short, but it was a really impressive result from them even on that map. So this Spitfire team is most definitely improved. They are they are they are ahead of the Titans now for sure, guaranteed. Don't say otherwise. The Spitfire will win a game this season. Um, I, I am feel very confident in saying that. They might win a game before they meet the Titans. They are that good. They look like they can beat some of these teams. Um, and while this game didn't go their way, it did go the way of the Eternal. The Eternal look really good, and we'll talk more about them, of course, later. Their big win had on Sunday but this is an interesting match it's an interesting series um I feel pretty good about both of these teams looking better going into this second half of the season one definitely looking more so better but that is to kind of be expected in a in a series like this the second match on Friday was my big pick game my first big pick game of the week LA Gladiators against the San Francisco Shock and I did correctly pick this one I picked the score as well. I picked the score for the first one as well. 3-1 for that series, 3-2 for this series. Gladiators looked very, very good, very, very strong. The Shock integrating Ants took, you know, not the best uh, result. And I think a lot of people are going to blame Ants for that, or they're going to blame some of the other players. But I just think it was a very good performance from the Gladiators. We know the Shock struggle on control maps. They lost both control maps in the series. One was map 5. That is a tough way to go out. If you struggle a lot on that map type that is a huge issue um if you're not going to be able to win on those maps you're going to lose a lot of series um you know if you can't win that first map um you basically are saying the other team needs to win one map during the series to force a second control map um and that can be very very tough so seeing that uh, is, is definitely a, a cause of concern for the Shock and definitely something to be a little worried about if you're a Shock fan, if you're a Shock player. It's something they need to work out and figure out. The Gladiators are a good team and they've looked good. Um, Kevster finally with the team. I thought he had a great series. I thought Space looked incredible this weekend, especially in this Shock series. That Space played super well. So all in all, good in from the Gladiators. I was very impressed by their play. Um, I was more impressed with the Gladiators play than I was disappointed in the Shock play, right? Like, that is a, a good sign for both these teams just being good, solid, all-around teams. Um, they both play again next week, and there'll be some interesting matches for them. So I'm curious and excited to see what they do. But what a series that this one was. Moving on to Saturday, we start in the APAC region. Hangzhou Spark beat the LA Valiant. Not much to talk about there. Hangzhou Spark are the better team. We expect them to win this series. They take it away. Wasn't very close. Um... And, uh, yeah, there's a 3-0. Spark are the better team. You should expect them to win. Second APAC series on Saturday was the Seoul Dynasty against the Chengdu Hunters. I think this one was a 3-1, if I recall correctly, for the Seoul Dynasty. I think people are sleeping on the Seoul Dynasty. I really do. People talk about them being inconsistent in the regular season. People talk about them doing weird stuff. Like, they ran, the, they had a week this season where they ran kind of weird stuff. This Dynasty team is not inconsistent. They're 8-2 with a plus 16 differential. They have the best differential in the Overwatch League. They've played the same number of games as the Shock, have a better differential. Yes, the Dynasty have to play weaker competition um, on average. You know, they have to play the Charge, the Excelsior, the uh, Valiant. Like, the, the Shock have to play a lot better teams. 
But the dragons, even to, to put this into context, even if the, the Shanghai Dragons... 6-0 their next two opponents to the point where they would have an equal record with the Soul Dynasty, they would also have a worse differential than the Soul Dynasty. So, like, the Dynasty are good. Their losses this season are a regular season loss to the Dragons, a regular season loss to the May Melee Fusion, and then a loss to the Dragons again in the June Joust Tournament um, qualifiers, or the regional knockouts. And they lost to the Chengdu Hunters in the May Melee Regional Knockouts. So, like, they're not... They haven't lost to a bad team. When they go up against a team that they are better than, they pretty much always just dominate them. This is not a bad team. I think this is a, a ridiculous narrative that people keep pushing because of what they did last season. And everyone's like, oh, they keep running Marvel and off-tank. Marvel's barely playing off-tank. 2U almost always plays off-tank now. Um, Marvel was playing main-tank this week. Like... This dynasty team is really, really good. People need to stop sleeping on them and stop saying they're this weird team that does weird things and runs weird compositions and stuff. They're not. This dynasty team is legit. They haven't made a tournament yet. One of the ones is because they had to play the Dragons. The other one, they played a Chengdu Hunters team that looked really, really good at the time. This dynasty team is, is good. and I, I, I'm tired of people acting like they're not. Do not write them off. Do not be surprised if they make a, a good run in the playoffs. If they make a deep run in one of these tournament cycles. This is a really good and scary team. Um, and and they, they basically just dismantled the Chengdu Hunters uh, in this series. The third and final APAC match on Saturday was the NYXL once again disappointing against the Guangzhou Charge. This time it was a 3-2 series that went the way of the Charge. Uh, this is a weird just matchup thing for the NYXL. It seems like it's a, a triangle forming like we had last year in NA with Florida and the two LA teams where Florida could beat the Gladiators but couldn't beat the Valiant, but the Gladiators could beat the Valiant but couldn't beat the Mayhem, and then the, you know, it was this whole, like, triangle. It looks like a triangle is helping here where the NYXL are undefeated against the Spark, Spark are undefeated against the Charge, Charge are undefeated against the NYXL. I don't know what's happening. I don't know what to make of it. I really have no idea. The NYXL are looking somewhat better, but they still have the obvious glaring issue of Yakpung having issues, and it's just not working for this team. They don't look very good, and they have a lot of room to improve, a lot of things they need to work on, I think, before they are going to be a legit contender um, in this APAC region. Now, there are some reports about the NYXL going after Kalios or Kalios, um, formerly, of course, from 2018, a member of the Boston Uprising, but recently with O2 Blast, where he played alongside Yakpung. Um, you know, I think that Bianca's been better than, than Yakpung has been this season, but as I talked about last week, there aren't a lot of great main tanks out there, and Yakpung is the main shot caller for this team, so really, you, you kind of have to invest into Yakpung. I'm curious to see what happens with Kalios. I'm curious to see if New York makes any coaching changes going forward, because they clearly have talent in that DPS line. Flora and Guangboon have looked so good every chance they get. Feather has, I think, looked really good. You know Ivy's solid. He hasn't really had the, the results this season to kind of show it fully. Um, but, you know, Jonex having a really great season again. Like, he, the series against the Valiant, which, you know, we'll talk about that later. He looked incredible. Like, Friday has been pretty good. It's just his tank line is having issues. I think they need to find a way to make Yakpung more comfortable. And I think probably next season we see them go a different route where they don't invest in Yakpung. They probably try to find another main tank. Though we, who knows, might be Overwatch 2 next time around. So it might just be one tank. But very weird team. And and I just, the NYXL are, are close. They're, they're close to being able to compete with some of these really good teams. But this tank line is just too much of an issue. They're too much of a liability. And it's, it's costing them matches that they should win, such as this one. So a pick I got wrong. Um... But it's uh, it's it's something that I'm just not quite sure what to make uh, of it, other than just the NYXL have a tank problem that they need to sort out if they have if they want any chance of being competitive um, in the league as a whole. We want to NA one of the most surprising matches so far this season. The San Francisco Shock squeak past the London Spitfire. The London Spitfire, this is why I said this Spitfire roster will win a game. They were close against the Eternal, 
and they were incredibly close and almost could have beaten the San Francisco Shock. And the Shock, they managed to win a control map here. They lost the first control map, though. It's a very, very worrying trend for the Shock, something that I would like to see them figure out because it is a problem if they keep losing on these control maps because if they're up against a good team, a, 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 an actual like serious contender, they're going to lose series because if they can't beat some of these teams, they are not going to be looking pretty. Huge credit to the Spitfire. They played very well. I think they're going to look incredible as time goes on. Um, they definitely look like what we thought they could be at the beginning of the season. I think Sparker is a big part of that. I think he rejuvenated this roster. No offense to Hybrid, Sparker just has so much raw talent and just so much energy and fire that he just brings into this team, or they just look so much better. And um, this was a great series. Huge surprise. Like I said, scraped by for the Shock. Um, it shouldn't have been this close, realistically, but Spitfire just have it where they need it, and they have looked pretty good, so... Interesting series, but close that win for the Shock. That's what you kind of need to see from those really good teams. Um, and they were able to do it, so good for them. Next, the Florida Mayhem fall to the Toronto Defiant. This one, I believe, was a 3-2. Um, I could be wrong, but I think it was a 3-2. Uh, it was a 3-2. Toronto Defiant uh, played pretty well. Uh, Aspire still on this team. They ran him the entire series. They ran him the entire weekend. Even though they're going for a majority Korean roster, Aspire has been the the one difference on this team who has not been the Korean player that's getting very normal playtime. And he looks really good. His Tracer has looked really good. Um, when he gets the ball hit scan, he looks good. He was paired with Hisu for this uh, weekend. A lot of somber compositions from Hisu. A lot of then like Tracer or McCree from Aspire. And I just think Toronto it looks pretty good. And I like seeing... Aspire play well. Uh, it was a big narrative coming into this season. There was only one player from NA Contenders that got signed. That was Juby. Now there's a second player joining the league uh, with Aspire, and he's playing really, really well. And I, I think it's great to see players who um, were just kind of given a shot, just kind of out of nowhere, really, because it wasn't really expected to do a lot, and has been making the most out of his opportunity and has been popping off. So love to see this. This is a surprising result. I mean, I think Yaki played exceptionally well in the Tracer whenever he got to play it in the series, but the Defiant were able to take it away. I think that it was pretty impressive, and I, I really don't know what, who, who the credit goes to. I don't know if it's a tank line thing. I mean, I thought both the tanks played really well this weekend. They struggled in the June Joust. Some of that, I'm sure, was because of the COVID problem that they dealt with, and I'm sure some of it as well was just a bit of a tough schedule, but they certainly made the most out of this win over the Mayhem. Um, managing to get this one in. I think it showed that Aspire kind of brought something to this team that they were lacking. And uh, very impressed by the Defiant. I'm actually a, a pretty big fan of what we've seen from them so far. And they've um, definitely made a case for one of the teams that you got to keep an eye out for because they do look very, very good now. And I'm very excited to see how they perform uh, going into the rest of the June no, Summer Showdown. Finally, closing out NA for Saturday. Boston Uprising beat the uh, Vancouver Titans. Didn't really watch this series very closely. Um, Uprising won. Uh, pretty good series from uh, Stand 1. And I, I know Color got some playtime in this one, which is good to see. So, all in all, good from the Uprising and from Punk. I know uh, getting a lot of playtime this weekend as well. So, Titans definitely looking like the weakest team in North America for sure. Spitfire had a pretty good weekend despite the 0-2 result. Titans had a pretty bad weekend. Um, so, unfortunate, but Uprising, pretty good. And we'll talk more about them later on uh, with their, their win on Sunday. My second big pick from Sunday was in the APAC region. Hangzhou Spark falling to the Seoul Dynasty. I thought this one would be a much closer series than it was. The Seoul Dynasty were completely in control of this one. It was not even close. Dynasty dominated the Spark in this series. And uh, that's what I am saying. The Dynasty are good. Stop sleeping on them. People are putting them too low. They've not lost to a bad team at all this season. Unlike the Spark, who, you know, they have losses to the Excelsior. Um, you know, like, even the Dragons have lost to the Spark. Um, 
and the Hunters. Like, the Dynasty's losses are better, I think, than the Dragon's losses. Um, but the Dynasty haven't been able to be the Dragons, and so that's kind of where you, you really look at that, at that, and you kind of have to criticize them. But the Dynasty looked really good in this game. Fits and Profit. Oh boy. Profit, this series, was outclassed by Fitz. Um, Profit's usually the hard carry, and Fitz just looked incredible. So, love the Dynasty, what they're doing. I think they really are a very good team that people are just not giving them the credit they deserve. But I see you, Dynasty. You guys are great, and I think you have a very real shot at being serious contenders going forward in this uh, this whole season, not even just the APAC region. Next is the Hunter versus the Guangzhou Charge. Not even going to lie to you, I watched the first map and a half of this, realized this series was going to be a 3-0, and just turned it off. I didn't care. Um, the Charge, despite the fact that they were good against the Excelsior the day before, and Choice A1 was looking pretty good, um, they just have no energy, and they have no life in them, and the fact that the NYXL lost this team just boggles my mind. Hunters just completely were just dominating them, and it just was so not worth watching. So, I don't know what the Charge are. Um, they just, they have... Choice A1, who looks good, and that's and Krong looks pretty good. And other than that, they just kind of fly by the seat of their pants. Oh, Eileen looks pretty good, too. Those three look pretty good. Other than that, they just kind of fly by the seat of their pants and hope that those three can do enough work to carry them. That's really what I see with this charge team. Works against a team like the NYXL, does not work against the Hunters. So, that's where we are. Final 8-pack match of the weekend, NYXL, 3 of the Valiant. Quick series, once again, nothing really to take away from this. Valiant are bad. NYXL... The, the, the way you know the NYXL have talent is that when they play against the Valiant, who are just, like, bad, like, the NYXL look like a team that should be, like, top of APAC. They just dominate them. They have arguably had the best performances against the Valiant out of any team so far this season. Haven't dropped a map. Basically speed ran them the both uh, both matchups they had. But for some reason, New York struggles against the other teams. Whether it be high-pressure situations, they start to crumble. I, I don't know what it is. Um, it's... It looks to me like it's the type of thing where this team is so incredibly talented in terms of raw talent, but they just make too many mistakes when it matters. Um, and in high-pressure situations, they fall apart. But against a team like the LA Valiant, where it's a pretty low-pressure situation, they just dominate. So I don't know what the NYXL are doing. Um, I'm curious to see what happens if they do actually sign Kalios, if that is a move they make. Um, usually Halo of Thoughts is, is correct when it comes to NYXL stuff i can't think of a single time he got an nyxl report wrong so i suppose we'll just kind of see what happens but uh as it stands right now um nyxl are a team that still has a chance i think to make a case for being a strong team if they can figure out these tank issues um because they go up against him at the Valiant, they really have a chance. So I'm curious what happens the rest of the summer showdown for them, because I believe they have a game against the Fusion and a game against the Spark. Both definitely winnable. Um, the Spark game especially is winnable. They have not lost the Spark yet this season. If they can do it again, you'd feel decent about them, but we'll see what happens. Uh, obviously, as an NYXL fan, a little biased, but I want to see them bring these results that they have against the Valiant more consistently against other teams. Um, even like the Spark, they beat pretty handily every time they play them, but just not seeing it everywhere else. Let's move on to the big surprise from Sunday, the Paris Eternal reverse sweep against the LA Gladiators. LA Gladiators kind of crumbled in the big moment and the, the last three maps, they were dominating the first two maps. And then all of a sudden the Eternal just got into their heads and just began this climb up where they were able to take the series away. Uh, Naga played really well, as always. Khan played really well. Oni God played really well. I thought Don had a good series. I think that the change... Oh, and I don't... Vestal played incredibly well as well. Um, I Dredro played good as well, but I didn't really notice Dredro's play as much. I wasn't really focusing on him as much, so I, I feel like I'd be doing a disservice saying he did or didn't play well. Um, so I'm not going to really be like, oh, he did certain things really, really well. But I definitely think that the additions of Dredro and Vestela kind of brought this different energy to this team. I think Elivo was playing really well this season. Definitely the change from Neptuno to Dredro brought a ton of new energy to this team. But I did think that we were seeing good performances when Elivo was in. I actually thought he was a pretty good piece of this team. 
But I think Vesela brings something different. He's clearly brought some, some great talent himself and has looked very good. So he has been a huge part of this internal team's success. They play the Shock next week. That is a series I'm really interested in right now because it, it, it feels weird right now saying the Eternal are a team that could compete and contend with some of the best teams in the league, but they're showing that they have that ability. And so I'm really interested to see what happens with that series. I'm curious to see if the Eternal can keep this level of play up, but they were, they were dominant in that second half against the Gladiators, and so... We'll see what happens, but I am very impressed by the Eternal. They are one of my Dark Horse teams to do really great things this tournament cycle, kind of like the Rain did last time around. And um, I, I'm very interested to see how the Eternal fare as we go forward. Standing are super close throughout the league, so they really do have a chance to kind of sneak into these tournaments and these playoffs as time goes on. So very impressed by the Eternal. Huge weekend from them. The Boston Uprising. Took a 3-0 victory of the Florida Mayhem, not the result I had expected. Um, Mayhem, to me, are the team that I feel the worst about. Um, they, they just have not really looked good since the May Melee. They lost the last three games they played in the uh, June Joust. They've lost the first two games here in the Summer Showdown. I don't really know what to single out as the problem for this team, because I don't think there is a single issue. Um... One of the issues I had a lot with this Mayhem team in the past was they always were a team that seemed to struggle from like C9s and lack of communication or at least poor communication. That seems to still be an issue for this team. I still think this team has a big issue in terms of flexibility. Um, you know, Yaki is really good on Tracer. He's pretty good on Echo, pretty good on Genji. Um, they brought in Checkmate in the series against the Defiant. Played a lot of Doomfist. Um, they played some Echo, I think. BQB is, is pretty good on, like, the hitscan and, and Sombra, but, like, OG still doesn't look great if he's not playing Winston. His Reinhardt's still good, but not incredible. Um, he got beaten out by Stan 1, and the Reinhardt that Stan 1 brought in was just completely outclassing what OG was doing on the Winston. And that's really all there is to it. Like, the Uprising know what to do. They know how to find win conditions assess fights assess win conditions they read teams very well and the mayhem i don't really know how things go for them going forward like this is the type of thing where like this is where you the mayhem are tested they're on a really bad losing skid and this can either break this team or they can you know they're still they're, they're four and six right like they don't have a great record but it's not bad. And they still have that one extra league point. Like, they can easily turn the ship around. One good weekend, they're back to 500. But it just doesn't look very good. And even when they had Tracer available this weekend, which is when you would feel the best about them, they just didn't have anything. And they just look kind of lifeless. Um, so I really have a lot of issues with this Mayhem team. And it was a 3-0 loss to the Uprising. It was a 3-0 and 4, so like it was a bit of a close series at, at times, but I'm really concerned about this Mayhem roster going forward because they just have not looked good in a long time. And so I'm very much looking at this team as a team that probably uh, will not be having a lot of success going into this Summer Showdown. Final match of the weekend was the Toronto Defiant winning the battle for Canada as expected. 3-0 for them. Very, very, very poor performance from the Titans. No breadsticks once again for the fans. Like I said earlier, definitely the weakest team in NA is the Titans. The Defiant certainly looking much improved, making a case to potentially be a threatening team against some of these top-level teams. We haven't seen some of the best teams in the league play yet, um, or the teams we assume are the best in the league. Haven't seen the Fuel, haven't seen the Outlaws, haven't seen the Justice, um haven't seen the rain so there's some good teams from na we haven't seen we haven't seen the dragons of the fusion in the apac region so this weekend was kind of rough because the only two teams you would kind of consider or three teams i guess you can you'd consider kind of like top level teams in the across the league that we saw in action were the gladiator shock and dynasty other than the dynasty it was a pretty um iffy week for those two teams um so It'll be interesting to see what happens going forward. Um, it's only been one weekend, so 
There's still a lot of things that can change, but as things stand right now, it's pretty interesting. But that's all for me for today. If you enjoyed this video, consider liking and subscribing for more like it in the future. That is obviously the best way for you to help uh, me. Let me know what you enjoy. Helps me make more content. It's a win-win situation for everybody. Comment down below your thoughts on what happened this past weekend. It was pretty interesting, I thought. So, love to hear from you on that. But I'm going to get out of here. Thank you all once again. Hope you're all staying safe and staying healthy. And until next time, bye-bye.